Jamie Bloomer is from Kimberley Park State School and is 10 years old. Outside of school, he likes to go swimming, both for training and for fun. At school, his favourite subject is sport. His second favourite subject is robotics because he loves how robots and codes function. Jamie wants to speak at the Childhood Summit to, uh, to raise awareness of global warming with the general public. This is becoming an urgent issue within today's society, and Jamie feels like this experience would allow him to step out of his comfort zone and express himself and make a positive change to our society. Please welcome this active agent for, a, agent for change, Jamie Bloomer. Have a look at this picture. Fast forward a few decades. This is what our future planet will look like if we continue doing what we are currently doing to our environment. This is a mythical city of Atlantis, famous for its beauty and advanced civilization. That is, until a series of deadly earthquakes sunk the paradise, ultimately transforming a once beautiful city to an unlivable abyss. Now, Although this might not happen to the entirety of Earth, research has found that the sea is rising 2.5 centimeters every five years. And by 2050, it is expected that 150 million humans' homes will be, be below the high tide level. Even though not everybody's homes will be sunk, there will hardly be a place on Earth unaffected as people migrate and put pressure on Earth's finite resources. If this happens, it would be equivalent to the destruction of Atlantis on steroids. Hi everybody, my name is Jamie. I'm a fifth grader at Kimberley Park State School. And essentially, throughout my presentation, I'm going to be discussing what climate change is, how it impacts the world in which we live in, it causes, and finally, how we can tackle this issue head on to prevent further damage. According to NASA, climate change is, is the change in the average conditions of rainfall and the temperature in a, long, in a region over a long period of time, as well as change in the average conditions. Global warming is resulted in more extremes more often. When it rains, it rains and floods bigger. And there are longer and more intense droughts and heat waves. This is extreme. Even in 2020, even Moscow, famous for its bitter cold and snow, went entirely snowless throughout the winter of 2020 and 2021. This is extreme to the max. Heat waves in Great Britain, droughts in the Amazon, and floods in Pakistan. These are symptoms of climate change. Nobody can deny these events are happening, but what is causing them? Looking at these two graphs, you can see correlation between carbon dioxide emissions and its effect on temperature. The graph on the left shows the tr trend of carbon dioxide emissions gradually increasing. And on the right, the graph shows temperature, although fluctuating seasonally is also increasing. It is basic science that greenhouse gases, including Carbon, carbon dioxide and methane result in increased temperatures. Now, the natural process which dictate climate change are complex and not completely understood. But 99% of scientists agree that human impact is driving this climate change. The other 1% are funded by the petroleum industry, which lobbies against climate action. Mm -hmm. I do not pretend to know all the nuances of climate change, but I have to trust the experts. After all, when I go on a plane, I have no idea how such a large machine gets into the air, but I trust the scientists and engineers who design the plane to know what they are doing. <laughs> now, I will look at some potential solutions for this problem. Given that the problem of global warming is huge and greenhouse gas emitters are numerous, there will be no single solution. Individuals can make changes in their own lives, but the only way to get meaningful change is through government policy. That 
incentivizes and encourages government, company and individual behaviour. I am going to look at some possible solutions for four of the biggest generators of carbon dioxide emissions. Transportation, electricity generation, manufacturing products at scale, and the mass farming of livestock. First, let's look at transportation. I think a carrot and a stick approach is the best. Investment in public transport should be ramped up in private vehicle use use discouraged by the tax policy. <coughs> Encouraging electric car take-up is possible if the source of electricity is environmentally friendly. Generating power through renewable energy sources should be mandated by government. This could include more solar or wind, and one interesting idea is using effluent to generate electricity. Now, let's look at farming. Farming emissions could be re reduced by management practices instead of reaching for that nasty glycosophite, aka Roundup, a horrible material chemical in its own right. One interesting idea is feeding kelp to cattle, which reduces the methane emissions, aka farts. Too bad it doesn't work for people. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to look at manufactured products at scale. Ultimately, the West, and this includes everybody sitting in this room right now, needs to pull up its socks and take a long, critical look at our lifestyles. A big chunk of our population is encouraged to buy a bunch of junk we don't really need, just because the advertising man told us we need it. When it comes down, to it, we need to change this mindless consumerism because it's b because it's killing our earth. This consumerism should be tempered by regulation, and the purchase of unneeded goods should be discouraged by taxes. According to the footprint calculator, do you believe that the average Australian's lifestyle requires 4.5 Earths? Unfortunately, there's only one Earth, so we need to change. In this presentation, I've talked about what climate change is, its causes, and some potential solutions. As a kid, I do not want to inherit a, a world drowning in a sea of environmental problems. The time to act was yesterday, but as we didn't, we all, get, we all better get out and act together today. Thank you.